Hi guys, we're here today to just cover off on a, a really quickly on a common question we get about when people are trying to start an investment portfolio and trying to compare the pair and work out what's better for them. And the, the one that we're trying to break down the, I guess, the decision for is unlisted managed investments versus listed managed investments. So, um, and when we're talking about unlisted, it's the traditional form of managed fund that, you know, once upon a time was done via paper forms and fax machines. Uh, but more commonly now, uh, what we're seeing is people either go direct to the manufacturer, and it can be through an online form, um, or they're going through a wrap account or some sort of investment platform to gain access to these. Yeah. Uh, and that you know, gets you know, stark contrast to the listed versions. Yeah, the listed versions are things such as exchange traded funds or ETFs, um, which are becoming more and more common. And these are traded on the exchange stock exchange, and, and they're a lot easier way potentially for people who are already familiar with trading on the stock exchange to get started into those managed investments. Yeah, and there's a whole lot of names that they're called as well. So you've got listed investment companies, you've got exchange quoted managed investment funds, you've got ETFs. So it can be a little bit confusing, but I guess the main distinction is, I guess, how you go about sort of accessing these. Yeah. Um, so in terms of how do people go about making a decision about which one's right for them, I think it's really simple. Um, well, it is. Well, hopefully by the end of this it will be. <laughs> um, so I think you need to start with the end in mind and go, well, what, how are you likely to transact on this portfolio and what is the end objective? So we want to know, I guess, how big the portfolio is likely to be because there's some significant considerations when you're starting out small um, because there are costs involved on the listed investment side. Yeah, yeah, the listed investment side, there's obviously brokerage each time that you go to buy and sell like a normal time you're going to buy purchase um, shares. So it's got to be, you've got to be aware that if you are going to do a regular savings plan or something like that, and you're doing smaller amounts such as $500 each time, that you're going to be paying a significant a significant amount in brokerage. Yeah, absolutely. And also there's minimum trade size as well. So if you are planning on doing regular transactions of anything less than $500, mm. which is commonly that's the minimum that you can trade on the ASX, you may need to look at other solutions or rethink sort of how the frequency of your investments. Uh, I think one of the big considerations as well is like how big the portfolio is likely to be and how many transactions you are likely to do because those transaction costs, if it is on a larger sum of money and you're not planning to transact very often, mm. the lower cost, the lack of having a third sort of party platform fee involved yeah. may be beneficial and sort of sway you down the path of um, doing it as a listed version. But I think there are significant merits if you are doing regular transactions, smaller portfolios, or perhaps diversing and flying across a hell of a lot more investments, then I think there's a, yeah, a big case to be said for sort of accessing via a wrap account or a platform. Yeah, especially with the, the wrap account will be able to do direct debits most of the time. So if you're running a regular savings plan, that'll be easier. You'll have consolidated tax reporting too. Um, so someone else will be looking after that for you rather than you having a spreadsheet sitting there going, all right, I purchased X amount at this date, at this cost um, for when you potentially go to sell the asset. Um, so there's definitely merit in that. Yeah, and I think the other thing to keep in mind as well, if the, if the end goal is to turn this into a, a passive income stream and actually have regular drawdowns on a monthly basis, doing that, again, through a platform or a wrap account is significantly easier than managing those transactions yourself and selling down the assets. So um, I think really, I think what you can take out of this is both of them can work. You can actually have them coexisting together and have mm. different parts of your portfolio structured in different ways. But ultimately, the main thing is get the look beyond the label, make sure you've got the right investment for you, and then make sure the vehicle is suitable for purpose when you're sort of thinking about the end game. Don't just sort of go blindly into one or the other. Definitely. Well, I hope you've got something out of today. And if you've got any other questions, please feel free to hit us up on any of our socials or send us an email and we'll uh, make sure we cover it in future uh, episodes.